this is a talk about building a culture of gaming in, uh, in Africa by Aram Tavia uh, from NetiArts. Um, so you might be wondering, who is this guy? Um, I'm clearly not Iram. Um, Iram is back in Ghana now um, because he couldn't get a visa for the Netherlands because he was also traveling to, to England and he had to switch his passport around. So um, he asked me to give his talk. And um, so first I'll, I'll introduce both of us. So that's Iram, he's from Lady Arts. And that's me, I'm from Weird Beard Games. Um, Iram... Um, is in, in Accra, in Ghana, and he founded Lady Arts in uh, 2009. Um, I'm actually here from Amsterdam in the Netherlands, uh, and I also have founded my own game studio back in 2007. Um, we have more things in, in common, although we're also very different, very far apart. We both make games, um, do work for higher projects, and create our own IP, and he has a studio of a size of about six, and Weird is about Oh, sorry, seven, and we're about six people. So, um, very different, very far apart, but also very much the same. And I want to talk to you a bit about like how we met, and that, that will explain to you why I am actually standing here right now. So, um, last year, I was at a conference uh, called Agile in Africa, in, uh, in Accra, in Ghana, um, which was a conference uh, about Agile development, Scrum, well, you all know that. And I gave a talk about uh, agile game development. And we also did a, a, a tour around like all kinds of different companies in the area. And we also went to an incubator area where I uh, met Letty Arts. Um, and we, we were talking like uh, all day uh, in the end. Uh, it was a very nice day. We had a lot of things uh, in common, um, even though we were both working on a game for Vodafone at that time, which was, which was really funny. Uh, and, and we all uh, had their own struggles of like, okay, we started a company like a few years back and how are we gonna grow, uh, grow now? So, um, well, when I, when I left Ghana again, I was like, well, it would be nice to work with, with Iram and his team in the future again. And the funny thing is that like, I think one or two months uh, after I left, um, I got an email from Geertje, who will introduce herself uh, in a minute as well. Um, and she's, she's, she wanted to work on a game for the, for the African market, actually. And I was like, well, I can start doing that, but actually I don't know anything of the African market. So, um, but I do know some guys who do. So uh, I introduced Geertje to, to Iram and his team, and, um, and now we're working together, actually, which is, which is really great. So Geertje, maybe you can also come up and, and introduce yourself for a second. Thank you, Niels. Um, like the sign says, my name is uh, Geertje Posma. I have a background in psychology and I'm an HIV AIDS counselor. Uh, never in my life did I expect to be doing a talk at a tech event like this. Uh, but I'm very happy to be here. Um, I also just noticed I get a free t-shirt with my card, so that's also uh, an extra thing. Um, yeah, Niels and I are working together uh, on a project called My Jorley, um, which is uh, a game that, that we're developing within the Web Foundation. And the Web Foundation, the name perhaps implicates that we do things around the web or IT, but we actually don't. Uh, the Web Foundation is a Dutch NGO based here in Amsterdam. Um, and we develop games, animations, and films about issues regarding sexual and reproductive health and rights. Um, and therefore, uh, we also work a lot in African countries. Um, this year we're developing... Uh, so far, the games that we have developed have all been uh, games that you play on a table. So actually not even uh, games that you play on a computer. Uh, the project that we're doing now with Lady Arts is a new endeavor for us, um, about which I will talk a little bit more later after this introduction. Uh, the game is called uh, My Jorley, and it's a serious game for, uh, for Ghanian youth to promote uh, the development of healthy sexual relationships. Um, yeah, I think that's it for now. Yeah. Thanks. Okay, so before we get back to that, um I'm now going to switch to the presentation of, of, of Letty Arts, basically. So sometimes I will say we or I, and then I actually mean Letty Arts. I never mean me or... So that can be a bit confusing, but uh, you'll get there. Um, 
So first, a bit about Africa. Uh, Africa is really big. Um, there's like 55 countries, over 3,000 cultures, uh, and more than a billion people. Um, I do like this slide actually better. A lot of people don't really know how big Africa really is. If you look at this map of Africa, so you can fit the US in there, you can fit China in there, you can fit India in there, and entire Europe. So it's that big. That's um, because we have the, the smashed map of the world. It always looks a bit small, but it's actually really, really big. Um, so that's about Africa. So it's a huge... Uh, untapped market, uh, actually, and of course there's a lot of hurdles to, to take, but uh, it has a huge potential. So let me a bit, uh, tell you a bit about games and, and game studios, which are currently, um, well, determining the landscape of, of the games industry in Africa. So in the 90s, uh, when we go back, there were actually uh, mainly people who were consuming games uh, coming from the West and from Asia, so Nintendo, um, some PlayStation, uh, everything we know as well. And then in 2003, there was actually the first game company. Um, what they did, uh, it was pretty smart, it's really, in, in Africa, there's not a lot of uh, good ways for, for payments throughout the, the entire continent uh, to, to purchase stuff online. So uh, they actually had an SMS text-based adventure. You probably all remember the text-based adventure books, like you were reading at some point, okay, there's a dragon, are you going to fight it or are you going to run away? If you want to fight it, go to page 24. If you want to run away, go to page 53. They did this with SMS, and when you wanted to fight the dragon, you had to SMS fight dragon, and that's how they made money. Um, they actually went on to become a more social platform, uh, and well, with the upcoming Facebook and Twitter and everything, they went bankrupt a few years ago. Maybe they should have stayed into gaming. Um, one of the first digital games created in Africa, as far as we know, um, is uh, Sword of Seagulls, which actually created by, by Iram um, for his master thesis of his studies. And a year later, um, Adventures of Nyangi was uh, created, which was um, created by a guy called Wesley, and he's in Kenya, and um, he's now the, the partner of, um, of IROM, and so they run a, a game studio together. And for us, it's sometimes a bit weird. Most of them, we're, we're really like in one location, but they, their daily way of working is that they're actually 6,000 kilometers apart. Um, so when we started working with them, it was a bit like, oh, that's really far, working with someone like in, in Ghana, but the distance from here, from Amsterdam to, to Ghana is almost the same distance as they have in their like daily basis. Uh, it's like seven and a half thousand kilometers from here to, to Accra, and it's from, from Ghana to, to Kenya, it's like 6,000. So it's basically the same. Um, so they're very much used to working with people in the rest of the continent. Um, well, some other studios uh, have been coming up in the, in the past few years. Uh, actually, Ubisoft has been in Morocco for quite some time. Uh, you see a lot of studios uh, in, in uh, South Africa, like Luma Arcade and uh, Afros, which stands for African Heroes. Um, and more and more are, are popping up in the, in the past few years. Um, what's really interesting is that there is a big difference between the north and the south on the one hand and the east and the west, the, the sub-Saharan countries, on, in the, on the other hand. You see way more western influences actually in the games in, from South Africa and from uh, Morocco and Egypt uh, than you see in the, the, the games which come from sub-Saharan countries. Um, that mainly has to do with Ubisoft being there but also uh, better universities which actually teach game design in, in, in the south and in the north, and in the east and in the west, they really have to invent everything themselves. There's a lot of people, people with a lot of passion, but um, if you want to hire a senior programmer, there isn't one. You just have to train that person yourself. Okay. That brings us to another, uh, another problem. Uh, there's, a, there's a big cultural problem. Um, 
education and games are truly seen as, as two walled gardens. Um, in a lot of African countries and cultures, education is very important and you have to take it really serious. And everything which is not serious and which will take away your focus from learning um, is like frowned upon to be doing. So games is really something which a lot of people are not so happy about. Um, so one of the ways that you can do that is actually to, to mix uh, education and games, something uh, Geert will talk a little bit more about. Um, but also um, what Lediart did, and what I think is, is really smart, is they looked like, okay, how can we use African culture in, uh, in video games? And we're thinking like, okay, so millions of people all around the world love superheroes. I mean, when we look here in the West, we know Spider-Man is a big hit, and we know Superman is a big hit, and Thor is a big hit. Uh, even though, like, Superman versus Batman was a failure, um, we still all love our superheroes. So, can we create African superheroes? That, that was the question they asked. And they said, well... We have actually a lot of great characters uh, throughout the continent, uh, like the pharaohs in Egypt, uh, Shaka Zulu in, in South Africa, and many, many, many more. Um, so they said, okay, let's, let's look at those. And when you start actually Googling for them in Google Image Search, you see images like this pop up. Um, and they are old-fashioned, or they are very, like, Western... Uh, view of those those heroes actually um, in other words they're a bit boring especially for for kids um, so and and that's a that's a pity because actually the stories which has been told for years and years and years are are really awesome so they were like well we should modern uh, modernize these so uh, who you see here uh, these are some characters created by by an intern uh, at Leti uh, it's Anansi it's Shaka Zulu and it's Farao. And what I really want to do is not just create these characters for games, but really create IPs, superhero IPs, which you can also use um, in, in, so in video games, but also in, in series, in movies, put them on T-shirts, uh, whatever you want. So really creating IPs and creating, uh, well, using your own cultural identity to, to, to make um, new superheroes. So did it work? Did it solve the issue? Well... Uh, this hasn't been going on very long yet, but they they have some very good uh, early responses so far. So they, they get a lot of feedback from a lot of people who are very happy that they're actually doing this. So people are really proud of what they're doing. Um, and the funny thing is that, um, as Iron likes to put it, they're not building a they're not starting a game company. They're actually building an industry. And what happened when they started doing this is that people said, like, hey, I've I, I seen what you're doing, I like what you're doing, can I test your game? Or um, can I localize your game? Can I translate it to French or to, to Swahili? And so basically you already see other companies arising next to, to them, which next to the game studio, the African game studios, you see companies arise which do QA and localization and everything we know here as well. So they are really kick-starting that, that industry in a, in a way. Um, going th quickly through a few, a few other things. So, um, yeah, we're at a tech conference, so I was like, I have to put in this slide as well. Um, what tools are they currently using? Of course, Unity. Um, but that's, that's very recent, actually. Um, many, many games uh, were, until now, still made uh, native. A lot for web, a lot for mobile, a lot of Java, um, a lot of HTML. Uh, some people use Game Maker and Construct too, but Unity is really gaining popularity there as well. Uh, Android is very big on the continent. Um, iOS a bit less. PC gaming depends a bit on the in the area where you are. So um, yeah, also Lady Arts, they first did most of their work in HTML5, but they're now uh, doing their first things with Unity and are very, very happy about it as well. So, video game studies in Africa. Um, there is not a lot of formal education. Uh, there's no game development studies. There's a few in, uh, in North Africa and there's a few in the South, but in the middle there, there's hardly anything like I, I 
told you before, um, you really have to educate uh, your own people. But it's going very rapidly and a lot of areas they have good startup hubs and people really see the potential because they can create games which are not only for their own locale but also uh, they can really stop worldwide. So they see a lot of potential and really uh, you see a rise of people who want to uh, learn about video games. Um, so that's why also you see a lot of local game associations pop up. Uh, IGDA has a lot of chapters uh, popping up in the past few years. So that is um, really good. Uh, also local game uh, events uh, in Nigeria, in South Africa, also in, uh, in Ghana are really uh, gaining popularity. Um, these are all from, like, most of them didn't exist like four or five years ago. So um, everyone who is in the games industry, you're not just like a programmer or building a game. Most of the time you're also like then the, uh, well, the organizer of your IGDA chapter or you organize an event. So it's a very small community and that's why you also see that studios from across the continent work a lot together. Like Let the Arts works also together. So they're separated themselves in two countries, but they also work together a lot with studios in South Africa. Uh, and they meet at, at all these events. So I want to give you some, some examples um, of games which, which are currently being made or have been made in the, in the industry. Um, first, of course, I'm going to start with uh, Africa's Legends, which is a match three fighting game by Letty Arts. Um, you uh, select a player, a superhero you like, and they all have different stats and capabilities. Uh, and then you play a match three game uh, in a story mode or in a quick battle uh, against another superhero, and you have to make match of three to try and beat uh, your opponent. The game, they, they didn't have a lot of marketing budget, and it was for them really a, a, a tryout to set the, the heroes in, in, in the market. Uh, they have had quite some uh, good responses. Um, there's now like 60,000 downloads, so not a lot, but if you take into account um, that there's no marketing budget and no marketing uh, at all really possible, that's actually quite a lot. Um, some other games, um, and now I have to peek in my notes a bit. So at the top left, you see uh, a game called Aware 3D. Uh, so this is based on a very classic uh, African uh, game. Um, and there you see again those two walled gardens which, which match up like you do something from the original culture. And so this game is actually very popu popular. Uh, the, the next one is Wilu, uh, which is made by a Ghanaian indie, uh, really an independent game developer. Uh, and at the bottom is Aurion, which uh, did a successful Kickstarter, uh, I think, last year. Uh, and at uh, the right, you see that as well. It's from Cameroon, uh, and it's available now on Steam as well. So um, you see that also those games are really, they're, they're not making it just for the African continent. They're really making it for the entire world. Um, oh. Then, yeah, the next game we're going to talk about, <laughs> sorry, I already showed your slide, is uh, the game we're working on together uh, with Letty Arts and uh, with Geertje. So, Geertje, welcome. <laughs> Thanks again. <coughs> yeah, like I uh, mentioned in my introduction, uh, within Web Foundation and together with Niels as our consultant, we are currently working on the development of a game called My Jorley. Um, when we started out with the project, we had a working title, which was Access, Sex Backwards. Um, but when we were in Ghana, we wanted to uh, find a name that was more local and um, looking at the content of the game we were talking about what is a name that is suitable and we found out that the term Majorly is a term that is being used by Ghanaian youths, especially by Ghanaian uh, boys to uh, to refer to their girlfriend or to their love interest. Um, what is also a really big pro is that currently there is a big hit in uh, Ghana uh, by a Ghanaian uh, uh, music artist who has a uh, a song with exactly the same title, which works out really well for us. Um, my Jorley is, uh, yeah, I've used the, 
the term serious game, but I prefer the term applied game, uh, because if you use the term serious, that also indicates that it is about something very serious, uh, which I'm not denying, because the topics we are addressing are very serious issues, but that is usually not the best way to approach young people um, if you want to talk to them about such issues. Um, so yeah, our game in general is to promote healthy sexual relationships and to allow players to practice with behaviors within the game to develop such uh, relationships. Uh, and the topics that we focus on are consent, um, tra transactional sex, which means uh, sex in trade for something. It's really something different than, uh, than being a sex worker. But what the term transactional sex applies, applies to is uh, young girls that have to fend for themselves, who trade sex for food, uh, for protection, uh, for higher grades in school, things like that. Um, and the other issue that we're addressing is teenage pregnancies and abortions. Uh, last year, the official figure in Ghana was a uh, hundred thousand girls, teenage girls in Ghana, uh, below the age of 16 uh, that were pregnant. Uh, personally, I think those figures are still biased. Um, what we found out during our field research in Ghana is that if we are talking about uh, issues that concern sexual and reproductive health and rights, that the, the causes, uh, the consequences and the responsibility for, when it, for, for problems regarding that issue is all put on the girls. Uh, the role and the responsibility of men and boys is actually uh, something that is not discussed. Sometimes when we're in conversation, sometimes it feels that if we're talking about teenage pregnancies, that people almost think that these girls fall pregnant by themselves, which we all know is impossible. Uh, so we've made a very uh, principled decision that within our game, we want to put the focus on the role and responsibilities of men and boys uh, regarding these, these issues that we are addressing. Um, what I want to come back to is the slides that Niels already uh, presented earlier. Uh, actually, the divide between education and gaming. Uh, what Niels put very nicely is that, uh, um, you know, when we're talking about education, uh, we're talking about something serious. And from my work experience in several countries on the African continent, is that when it comes to, uh, to education, it is something serious. Because education for, for young people is their only escape or hope out of poverty that they are living in. Uh, the other thing that is important to realize is that uh, education, especially public education in a lot of African countries, is characterized by a huge lack of resources. We're talking about small classrooms, uh, a large group of children for sometimes, let's say, 100 or 150 children for one teacher who is being underpaid and uh, the whole school is understaffed. This is not something uncommon. And the other thing to realize about educa public education uh, in African countries is the relationship between teachers and students. Um, there is a huge distance in terms of hierarchy between uh, teachers and students. It makes it, this makes it um, very difficult to incorporate play into education. Uh, uh, while we feel at, uh, um, at Web Foundation that play is uh, an extremely um, important way to address these issues with young people. Sexuality and sexual and reproductive health and rights in schools uh, is hardly being addressed and uh, we can we can look at cultural religious economical and other societal factors why that is not happening but this is a fact and this is a reflection of how these issues are also discussed within society um, and what we feel at web foundation is that uh, open communication and room for, for for exploration and play is really important for for young people to be able to adopt healthy attitudes and healthy behaviors towards uh, sexuality and to eventually make informed decisions about their own sexuality and those of their sexual partners um, and next to that, that uh, because sexuality for young people is such a huge taboo, most of the available services are also not very youth-friendly. Um, 
and we feel that through their mobile phones, young people are increasingly spending more time on their mobile phones, which is also the case for African youth, and specifically if, if we're looking at Ghana. Ghana is a country where a lot of second-hand technology from the West uh, gets imported. Uh, so also smart to have a smartphone for Ghanaian youth specifically is not necessarily something uncommon anymore. Um, when we were starting up this project, like Neil said, first we approached, uh, because we are based in the Netherlands, we approached gaming companies here uh, in the Netherlands. We ended up with Niels, and Niels referred us back to Lady Arts, for which we are extremely grateful and happy, uh, because we've set up a really good uh, collaboration with, uh, with Lady Arts. For us, they are uh, more than only a game designer. They have actually helped us to formulate uh, a vision of... Um, and an ambition of where this game uh, could be headed uh, within Ghana. Um, it is not a commercial game, it is not a game that people will have to pay for, but what we are looking for is to integrate this game into uh, uh, programming with, within other NGOs and with other organizations that address these, uh, address these issues with young people. Um, they have been extremely good in providing us with vital contextual information. Um, and that's about the, the content of the game, but also game-related, uh, uh, to make sure that we are developing a game that is actually uh, that can actually reach our target group. Uh, they have been an active part of our field research. Uh, we had a trip of three weeks in which we visited a lot of organizations and people that uh, that work in this field, and there was always a consultant with Lady Arts with us, also in the, the group sessions that we had with young people. Uh, which has been extremely beneficial because for them it is much easier to pinpoint which elements uh, and information can be sort of uh, gamified. Um, and the last thing that, that and the reason why we're really happy to be working with Lady Arts, and that's uh, what Niels, Niels also addressed, is that um, if we're talking about identification and framing, uh, and, and this applies to gaming, but also to the industry that, I've, that I work in, which is the development industry, is that um, uh, the role models that, uh, that African kids get uh, are usually very hard for them to identify with. Uh, the development aid sector has for a long time been uh, the West's coming uh, to Africa to, uh, show, Ghanian, to sh show African people and African youth how it should be done. Um, however, there is a, a huge potential on, uh, on, on identification and inspiration within the continent itself. Uh, so this is, we are making sure that this game is something that when the, peop when the young people play it, that they actually feel this is about me and this is about my town and my living environment. There's, I have... Uh, oh. oh, I'm over time already. I'm I'm almost finished. I have one request to this uh, to this audience. Um, we have the ambition to develop this game not only as a game, but we want to develop it as a validated health intervention. So we want to make sure that what we uh, the attitudes and behaviors that we hope to enforce and to change with this game, we want to make sure that it actually does that. Uh, we've made a basic setup for our validation research of the demo, uh, which includes these three aspects. Uh, so build in feedback analytics to see how they behave in the game. Uh, uh, Self-reports on attitudes and behavior and field trials with a demo in combination with interviews. If there is anybody in this audience who has uh, experience or has somebody in their network with experience on validating a game like this, I would really much like to get in contact with you because we can still use a lot of input on that. That's it. Thank you very much. <laughs>